live by Welcome, Agent. Secret Agent, or Sly Spy as it was known in the Western Arcades, is a James Bond inspired arcade action game from 1989 by Data East. In fact, you could name this 007, and nobody would think otherwise, except for the main character using an American flag decorated parachute. But don't let that fool you, the game is full of James Bond tributes. Besides having a special weapon known as the Golden Gun, Several bosses and stages in the game are based on villains and settings in the James Bond series. The second boss is based upon Jaws, from the films The Spy Who Loved Me and Moonraker, while the third boss is based upon Oddjob, from the film Goldfinger. The ninth and final stage looks like the launch base seen in the movie Moonraker. Secret Agent was ported to many home computers, but never saw the release on a console until 2010 when it appeared on the Data East Arcade Classics for the Wii. This is basically just a collection of emulated arcade ROMs with a fancy front end. Great job! So let's start off with what many may consider to be the worst part of Secret Agent, but in actual fact, this isn't such a bad game. For the ZX Spectrum the graphics are pretty well done, and the music for what is there is also pretty good. The biggest issue this version has though is the gameplay. It's hard to describe, but the specky version feels basic. It's as if you're playing a game with no weight to the character. For example, no matter if you're swimming, riding the motorbike or walking, the movement of the character always feels the same. The enemies also seem to be a lot more basic too, in the way they appear on screen as they rush forward to attack you. But like I said, this is not a bad game, but it may be one that could have been better.
Now this is more like it. The quality of the graphics in the CPC port are fantastic. To say that they are lovely is an understatement. The game also plays really well and surprisingly fast. But of course by now you've probably noticed something missing. Yep, the sound. This game is as quiet as a monastery. I guess that's how the game keeps running at a brisk pace. No sound processing means more resources for the actual graphics and gameplay. Although the Commodore 64 version runs at a lower resolution compared to the other versions, it still manages to look really good. Compared to the Amstrad and Spectrum, the C64 version follows the arcade's presentation much closer. Not only that, but it also plays great and features some excellent parallax scrolling. Oh, and let's not forget about the groovy soundtrack provided by the Fallen Brothers. Earlier on I said that many would consider the ZX Spectrum to be the worst version of Secret Agent, but in all honesty, I think it's the Amiga port which is the worst. It always seems like I'm ripping on the Amiga, but I'm not doing it intentionally. 
First of all, we have to acknowledge the fantastic soundtrack. It's easily the high point of this game. Tim and Jeff Follin have provided us with a truly great original soundtrack. It's just a shame the rest of the game isn't up to par. Well, that's not true. The graphics are pretty good, but that's where the good points end. This port suffers greatly from unresponsive controls, sluggish gameplay and terrible collision detection. It's these points that make this, in my opinion, a missed opportunity. Just like the Amiga version, the ST loads quite a lot, but it's even worse on the ST because you need to switch discs pretty much after every stage. However, apart from the disc swapping issues and pretty poor music, this is an excellent port. Just like the Amiga, you can either play with music or sound effects. Personally, I'd rather have the music despite how bad it is. The gameplay is fast and tight with graphics that are extremely detailed. It's even parallax scrolling. Atari ST fans should be proud of this port. Just turn down the audio and play the Amiga soundtrack instead.
Now let's take a look at all those versions of Secret Agent running side by side. Which version do you think is the best?